President Mohamed Buhari and Acting President Professor Yemi Oshibajo are now 50% into their constitutional journey, one that is expected to lead all Nigerians, young and old, to a destination called prosperity. Has the first half performance of the president met the expectations of most Nigerians, and will the second half exceed expectations? Joining us tonight on the News at 10 to review the two-year performance of the government is Mr. Babajide Ugusongo, Channel Television's Data and Information Analyst. You're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Now, two years into this promise of change, what promises have been kept and what's left to be done? I would rather take it from a slightly different perspective. So listen carefully to what I'm about to say. I am a slow walker, but I never walk back. Now that's Abraham Lincoln. A century and a half after Lincoln's assassination, will Nigerians allow President Buhari to be a slow walker? Perhaps not. Remember, Superman candidate Buhari came in with heavy promises. He had made heavy promises that perhaps so heavy for Superman to carry. And so today we need to look at how heavy are those promises and what lies, lies ahead. And there are several ways we could, we could um, look at this. Remember, and let me make myself clear, on the 26th of December 2014, just like Donald Trump, candidate Buhari had tweeted, he had tweeted about four things that he wants to be judged on. Four things that he said were most important to him. Now, what were these four things? The first, jobs. He had talked about power. He had also talked about economy in that tweet, and he had mentioned security. So let's quickly talk about these first three things. Jobs. The promise was three million jobs per annum. The evidence from the NBS shows in the first 12 months, three million jobs were not created, only 1.2 million jobs. The evidence also shows that all of last year, we created less than one million jobs. Here's what it means. Braised on the president's own standard, the benchmark he has set for himself, and depending on how strict of a teacher you are, you will either score that four or three over 10. That's a P8 or an F9. But should we expect the president's performance to improve? Yes, we should, even though we are not yet out of the woods. Today's evidence shows that the rate of decline of the economy is reducing. And so regarding jobs in the days ahead, it looks brighter than the days behind us. And that's just for jobs. On power, we do remember 29th May 2015, total power generated was only 2,700 megawatts. 60 days ago, the new evidence shows power generation that was sent out 3,900 megawatts. Is that an improvement? Yes, it is an improvement of 45%. So that's good news on power. But again, there's bad news on power. Because even based on the president's own standard, the plan for 2019 was 10,000 megawatts. And so we're halfway into this journey. Yet, we are not yet halfway into what power offers us. And finally, let's look at the economy. Can we have a discussion on the economy without again talking about food. No, we can't, because the evidence clearly shows that more than half of what we spend goes on food. So consider this very carefully. In the first two years of President Obasanjo, food inflation was 14%. In the first two years of President Yaradua, food inflation was 33%. However, in the first two years of President Jonathan, food inflation was 23%. Food inflation in this first two years 35%. That's the highest within the four presidents we've had in the Fourth Republic. Now, Mr. Augusto, besides food inflation, can, when we look at this present administration and the other ones that have come, any similarities or differences? There, there are quite a lot of similarities and, and, and differences as well. But let's quickly look at what had happened and what the headlines were two years into President Obama and George Teno. The headlines, three major things stand, stand out. FG recovers a hundred billion naira stolen money. News similar to today, a Senate of crisis, and we have McAfee's tenor of troubles. This headlines, we are two years, 2001, into the anniversary of um, President Obama. So let's quickly flip into what were the headlines, two years into President Yaradua. That was 2009. And we can clearly see three major things stand out. We've seen on the top right, budget. Still issues around the budget. We've seen issues on militancy, which you can see in the center. And at the bottom left, 
We've seen uh, the extradition of El Rufai still on course, EFCC. These are still three subjects that we still face. What were the headlines two years into President Jonathan's tenure? Again, similar to what we have today. We have issues of pension fund management on the top left. You can see Boko Haram concerns. And look at that picture you have, issues of infrastructure decay. The summary is what has been going on in the last 18 years can be summarized under three subjects. The first is severe crime. The second is remarkable irresponsibility. What is the third? The third is something you wouldn't j just unbelieve. You could summarize the third as consistent challenges. Consistent challenges. But beyond all these problems, what is the solution? And the solution was put on our table a century and a half ago. And that solution is what a lot of Nigerians are expecting right now going forward, Mr. Aguson, because they want, the man on the street wants a better life. So what do you think this government can do to turn the fortunes around? Quick solution, what James Freeman Clark had suggested. December 1870, he had said, a politician only thinks about the next election, but a statesman thinks about the next generation. And so we need to ask ourselves, how many statesmen do we have? So the solution lies in not we growing politicians. It lies in we having people that are concerned about the next generation. Many thanks for joining us on the News at 10. Mr. Babajide Ogusongo is Channel Television's Data and Information Analyst. Thank you.